You've probably all seen this image before, but do you know where it comes from? If I tell you to imagine a horror story, you will probably think of bloodthirsty monsters or grotesque jump scares. We've all jumped and felt physically disturbed by them, but that is only the first level of horror. There exists another type, far more powerful, one that twists your mind and guts without anything emerging from the screen. A horror that touches your emotions with only a few words and images. And what if I told you that you could find that in a manga? Well, some might be skeptical, and I get it. Mangas are not known for being great horror content. You could say that Parasite might seem scary for example, but it's actually okay when you go through the manga. Manga and horror doesn't necessarily blend well together. In the current state of anime and manga, it's challenging to create a horrifying atmosphere in just few pages released weekly, especially to sustain it for months or even years. The target audience for publishers is mostly children and young adolescents, and horror isn't really a popular genre among those groups. Classic shonen with friendships and good fights? Now that's attractive and marketable. Nonetheless, certain authors like Hitoshi Iwaki, Go Nagai, or Kengo Nasawa still manage to use manga to frighten us. They are responsible for inventing psychedelic creatures and showing the monstrosity that resides deep within a man. But among all the horror mangas, one in particular masters fear to a point where his style is now recognized as the legend of Japanese horror. This man is Junji Ito, and that's who we're going to talk about today. One of the most pitiful things in the world, I think, is the human mind's inability to correlate all its contents. We live on an island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. These words are from the first chapter of The Call of Cthulhu by Howard Phillips Lovecraft and perfectly encapsulate the atmosphere found in Junji Ito's works. Ito discovered horror stories very early on by reading some of the first masters of Japanese horror, particularly Shinichi Koga and especially Kazuo Umezu, the author of God's Left Hand, Devil's Right Hand, and also a reference in horror manga. His first experience with horror was quite unique. Ito recounts that when he was 4 years old, in his house, the only way to get to the toilet was through a narrow underground tunnel. Young Ito had to progress alone in the darkness for several moments when he wanted to go there. Over time, the idea of progressing in a dark place where one can only move forward became one of Junji Ito's signatures. He started creating horror manga at the age of 20 in 1983 while still working as a dental assistant. During the day, he removed teeth and at night, he added to his creatures. However, it was truly from the 2000s onwards that he gained international recognition with his three major titles. First, Tomi, the story of a mysteriously resurrected dead teenage girl who begins to corrupt the people around her. Then came Gyo, which tells the story of a couple pursued by creatures, part fish, part spider. And lastly, Uzumaki, the story of a town gradually invaded by a spiral. You might think it's nonsense, but we'll come back to that and you'll see how creepy it gets. His most popular short story is undoubtedly the Enigma of Amigara Fault. The story starts with a violent earthquake in Japan that splits a mountain in two, revealing a series of strange holes shaped like human figures. A search team is dispatched to study this phenomenon. However, nobody manages to understand the nature and origin of these holes. That's when a person arrives and claims that one of the holes belongs to him because it perfectly matches the shape of his body. He then proceeds to remove his clothes to the worried look of the crowd and slowly begins to slip inside the mountain. More and more people start finding the hole that belongs to them and start descending into the mountain's dark depths. I won't spoil the ending for you, but the last page is truly terrifying. It's like one of those images that becomes ingrained in your subconscious. The majority of Junji Ito's work consists of short stories, each a single chapter exploring new ways to instill fear through manga. In essence, all these mangas are small test tubes of terror. Unfortunately, the difficulty in adapting such an atmosphere for the screen makes his work less known to the general public. Attempts were made with Gyo and Tomi, which received various live-action adaptations, but they weren't particularly great. Even a 12-episode anime was released in 2018, but the audience didn't quite latch onto it, primarily because the atmosphere wasn't accurately conveyed. Junji Ito's first strength is his art. His mangas are both sinisterly beautiful and downright terrifying. What he draws stands out from the classic and smooth aesthetics we're used to seeing in our mangas. Every line, every detail 
aims to create unease in the viewer. And, in addition to the directly horrifying monsters and elements, Ito manages to instill discomfort in the most mundane figures. This is particularly noticeable in his manga, Yon and Mu, which depict his two cats in grotesque and eerily unsettling poses. The devil is in the details, and that's where Junji Ito finds it. No one else but him can draw organic elements and decay with such finesse. That's why the animated adaptation fell short. Look at these two images for example. The detail truly makes a difference. Ito is a master of distortion. There's always something malicious and corrupted in his faces. He knows perfectly well how to accentuate and twist his character's features to make a simple gaze more frightening than any monster. This idea notably comes from the manga Parasite mentioned earlier. Drawn by Itoshi Iwaki and published between 1988 and 1994, it tells of an invasion of extraterrestrial parasites that possess humans by entering their brains. In Parasite, Iwaki instills fear by showing disturbing images in an excessively banal context. It's this contrast that catches the readers off guard and evokes anxiety. On his part, Junji Ito hardly uses cliché like vampires, zombies, or werewolves. He prefers to twist our everyday lives to create a series of unsettling disparities. As he himself says, it involves taking something normal and looking at it upside down, and it's devilishly effective. Because we see zombies or vampires everywhere, we know what they are, we know how they work, so we can prepare for them, and they're less frightening. But when we see this kind of monster, we're completely lost. In horror, the threat is always stronger if it evokes something familiar, while maintaining a mysterious aura. With Junji Ito, we're not afraid of what we don't understand, we're afraid of what we think we understand. We fear that our brain recognizes familiar elements in horrifying images, further blurring the lines between imagination and reality. In this regard, Ito's philosophy closely resembles Lovecraft's. Lovecraft, the author of The Call of Cthulhu, is a significant source of inspiration for Ito, particularly through what is called cosmic horror. These are stories that speak of interstellar horror, surpassing our understanding of concepts and truths, a mere glimpse of which is enough to drive us mad. For example, in The Call of Cthulhu, Lovecraft tells the story of an anthropologist who while investigating strange documents left by a recently deceased scientist, discovers the existence of a secret cult celebrating the awakening of Cthulhu, an ancient and powerful being. Fear is thus generated through the slow establishment of a weighty atmosphere, in which we follow a protagonist discovering that the evil before him is far greater than he thought. Each new discovery makes him realize that he is ultimately a tiny creature in the vastness of the cosmos, helpless in the face of the horror before him. Similarly, in Gyo, the story progresses relentlessly like a divine punishment descending upon humanity. Muma no Kiku directly discusses the connection between a man and the universe and gradually introduces the idea of a higher force entering the characters' lives with increasingly dire consequences. In fact, Ito appreciates Lovecraft's work so much that he created a panel of the author in a surreal setting reminiscent of the atmosphere in Lovecraft's works. All these elements are crystallized in the three volumes of Uzumaki in which a town is haunted not by monsters or spirits, but by the concept of a spiral. At first, it only appears through occasional signs, but quickly the entire town begins to sink gradually into madness. Junji Ito thus uses a seemingly innocuous geometric shape and methodically transforms it into a terrifying symbol of corruption. It starts with unsettling details, isolated cases, strange events that causes the metamorphosis or death of several people, all related to this idea of a spiral. Then, gradually, the influence of the spiral becomes stronger. It creates tornadoes, turns the weakest into snails, and even corrupts newborns with strange mushrooms. Soon, the city begins to fall into ruins. As the inhabitants try to flee, they realize that as soon as they move away from the buildings, they feel like they're going in circles without being able to leave. New people start arriving in the city, curious journalists and volunteers coming to help with the reconstruction. They all slowly find themselves trapped, inexorably drawn towards the heart of the spiral. At this point, the spiral is no longer just a shape, it has become an almost palpable presence that sucks everything around it. It's not a monster or a villain, 
It's a force that draws us in without us being able to defend ourselves. It evokes a very particular fear. It's like a mix of fascination and panic. All this makes Uzumaki, surely, one of the most nightmarish mangas you'll ever read. Through seemingly innocuous elements, if Ito's stories are so effective, it's because they act like a slowly tightening vice around his characters. Horror arrives through initially innocuous elements, like rumors of balloons with human heads, a spiral-shaped scar, or a simple hole in a wall. Quickly, events turn grotesque and psychedelic, and when the characters finally realize that something is wrong, well, it's too late to escape. They have no choice, they must move forward. Whether into the center of a labyrinth in the dark hole, or into the heart of a spiral, they advance towards terror. Over the years, Junji Ito's style has naturally become an essential reference in horror manga. His influence can be seen in other works of the same genre, such as Fuan no Tane by Masaaki Nakayama, or even Aku no Hana, Suzu Chimi's adaptation of Baudelaire's Les Fleurs du Mal. Both adopt the idea of gradually distorting everyday symbols to make them increasingly unsettling. Traces of Ito's work can also be found in Death Stranding, the latest game from Hideo Kojima. Ito even appears as a cameo in a hologram, and both men were supposed to work together on the game Silent Hill, alongside Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reedus. With such a team, the game they would have made would have been a masterpiece, probably one of the best horror game of all time. Indeed, this seemed to be confirmed by the playable demo released in August 2014. However, due to internal conflicts at Konami, notably around Kojima's departure, the game was cancelled. If you're looking for a new reason to dislike Konami, there you have it. Despite the cancellation of Silent Hill, Kojima and Ito remained on good terms, and even though the latter is not directly credited at the end of Death Stranding, one can still draw connections between the game's atmosphere and Junji Ito's imagination. For example, the dead fish on the game's beaches somewhat recalls the atmosphere and unhealthy aesthetics of Ito. For over 20 years, his universe has expanded to encompass over a hundred stories. While Tomi, Gyo, and Uzumaki remain his greatest masterpieces, his other titles are filled with memorable experiences. If this video has piqued your interest in delving into Juji Ito's nightmarish universe, I can only recommend starting with the short stories, beginning with The Enigma of Amigara Fault, then moving on to The Hanging Balloons, which tells of human-headed balloon deliveries. After that, you'll be ready for the best two stories, Gyo and Uzumaki. When you've read them, let me know how you found them in the comments. Moreover, if you're more into anime, Adult Swim has announced an animated adaptation of Uzumaki. It shouldn't take long before it's released. That was it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And see you on the next one.